This is the hat of shame. I see you laughing at me. Yeah. Hi there. Welcome to Yarns and Yarns, where I talk about my favorite things, fibers and stories. Um, this is episode two, and today I have my favorite cup with black coffee. Mm. And first, I want to start off by talking about one of my favorite social media gurus. gurus. Uh, her name is Kristen Lamb, and she also writes and crochets. Somehow books and yarns feel destined to be paired, like burgers and fries, apples and, oh, wait, wrong metaphor, um, wine and cheese, chocolate and, well, chocolate pairs with anything. Anyway, I'll link to Kristen below. Um, but when an author behaves badly, she awards them dun, 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 the pants of shame. Look, I figured out how to add an image right here. Fortunately, I have never made such a poor choice of pattern and yarn color, along with placement of said color. Um, but yeah, this hat is probably the worst thing I've made to date. <laughs> At least it was an accident. Go ahead and hit pause. I think you know, guys need to go um, wash out your eyes. Yeah, give them a good scrub. And no, I am not wearing this because hubby got upset about my secret YouTube show. Um, actually, when I told him, he was really curious about it, um, and he suggested a better background. Um, <laughs> not Legos, but um, I still haven't told my boys. So this was supposed to be a cute jazz era cloche, and as I was knitting it, I had visions of blending Elsa with Tiana and getting the urge to wear a fringy flapper dress. What was in my head obviously did not translate because I didn't follow the rules. My needles were too large, not by much. Um, I used acrylic yarn because it was in my pitiful little stash, if I could point, point right. Um, and uh, I didn't make a gauge swatch, which is probably the worst thing I could have done. So, as you can see, I did not finish it because when I tried it on, let me get the swirl going. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, when I tried it on, I, I just got frustrated and gave up. So um, yeah, um, I will finish it and try to shrink it, uh, but it's acrylic, so don't hold your breath. I found an article that tells you how you can kind of shrink acrylic um, but you have to simmer it on the stove for 40 minutes and um, you can't eat out of that pot again. Time to visit the thrift store for a pot. But I did learn a new cast on method, which I love. Um, it's the cable cast on and I've always done the long tail cast on, but I hated having to guess how long to make my tail. So I love this one, especially since this hat, I needed a cast on 240 stitches. So that's enough of that. So <laughs> this is the other hat that I made over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's also actually not finished. It needs one of these cute little buttons to go right here. It's kind of hard to do this in the computer. Anyway, um, but uh, I've been wearing it anyway just because I'm lazy. This time I used a polyester fiber. Um, this one is a Red Heart Amore line. Um, the color is chamomile, chamomile, however you want to pronounce that. I need to move away from synthetic fibers. Granny taught me to crochet and I only ever remember her using um, Red Heart acrylic. So that's what I always knitted with, or actually at the time I crocheted with. Um, but hence why uh, she never taught me to block anything. I've been following a podcast called The Knitter Next Door, um, Angie B, and I'll, I'll link below. Um, and she makes some absolutely beautiful pieces. 
and I've realized that if I want to make something seriously nice to wear, I've got to branch out. This hat does have um, matching fingerless gloves. I love my fingerless gloves. And um, I have yet to make them. This is the first one. I got a little lost. It wanted double pointed needles and I hate using double pointed needles. So I'm trying the magic loop. I don't know how well it's going to work. So I did make one more hat. Um, it was a second pumpkin hat for my neighbor. And I'm going to show you one more stupid thing that I did. Maybe I'll keep this hat for when I do something dumb. Anyway, her hat was perfect. This one is the one that I wore during the last episode. And along the band is supposed to be single crochets, right? These are not single crochets. I have no idea what these are. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, but that's probably why the hat stretched and slouched as much as it did. So, the big project. Um, I am almost done with the back panel to my Weasley sweater. Ta-da! Um, I found this yarn at Hobby Lobby. It's the Yarnby um, Rustic Romantic uh, brand. Again, it's acrylic, um, but it has, you know, little bits of hemp woven in to kind of give it this homespun tweedy look um, and I really like it um, but it's 85% uh, acrylic and 15% hemp so there's a little label if anybody wants to see. The main color is called Red Roads and when I'm ready for the letter on the front I picked this one called Oaky Wheat. It's a good thing I don't have to eat it. Wheat makes me really really sick. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to um, try the intarsia method of putting the letter on the front or just do a duplicate stitch. You know what? I should do intarsia. I need to learn how to do that. I had trouble finding the middle pool for this yarn, so I took them to my local library at the Makerspace where they have a yarn ball winder. So now I've got all these cute little red cakes with a middle pool ready to, ready to go and not get tangled. This time, I made a swatch. I learned my lesson. Um, something else that I learned is a better way for me to purl. Um, this sweater is knitted flat, so every other row I got a purl, and it's always been uncomfortable, but this is a new method that I learned for me, and it's, for me, it works. Um, I knit continental, um, but I never could get the hang of purling continental, so I just, I purled with the, you know, to wrap. Um, to the yarn over that way. Um, but I'll link below to the video that I found that works for me. And hopefully soon, another podcaster that I follow, her name is Gypsy Rose, and I'll again link below. Um, she is going to do a tutorial for her um, sorting hat. And it looks so cute. She shows it in her first episode. You gotta go check it out. It's, it's really cute. I'm looking forward to that. I think it'd be a lot of fun to wear with my Weasley sweater. So the other thing that I started was a new flag to balance my Union Jack. Um, this is going to be the Irish flag, the lovely tricolor with green, white, and orange. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking balance? By the time she's done with the tricolor, it'll be at least twice the size of the Union Jack. How's that balance? Well, <laughs> Honestly, as much as I love the UK, a bigger piece of my heart is in Ireland. So, yes, balance. Several YouTube hosts, they, they all have these cute bags that they keep their projects in, you know, individual bags for different projects they're working on. And they're all so cute and pretty, but you know what? I just have one bag. And it's this one. It's the one I made when I lived in Florida. Um, and I just use it when I'm you know, out and about, and I just want a project to work on. Otherwise, everything I'm working on is kind of scattered around my desk. <laughs> so it kind of makes a mess. And I'm creative, so I like a mess. You know, it should probably say, you know, Accio knitting needles, because that's what I use it for. But, you know, of course books works too. Um, and if you would like to make your own Accio books tote, um, I'll link to the tutorial below. 
So the next hat that I have lined up to do is me finally moving away from synthetic fibers. Um, it's an Art Deco hat, and um, these are the colors that I'm going to be using for it. Um, this one is Arctic Spruce, and this one is called Fisk. It's the Yarn Bee brand in the Chloe line, and um, it is 70% wool and 30% viscous. So hopefully this won't be another hat of shame. The other night, I dreamed that I shaved my head. It made the Rogaine easier to apply. <laughs> Moving on to stories. Um, Thursday. Thursday, guys. Then the insanity begins. Yes, it's that lovely month of insanity that we writers call NaNoWriMo. Um, there's a kickoff party that's happening at my local library on Saturday, which is when I hoping to upload this video, so we'll say today, um, and I'll go, and I'll feel like a poser. I'm not ready. I still have so much research to do. I haven't done my outline, and this is supposed to be the first year that I will have actually planned. Remember that writer's conference I mentioned where I placed third? Um, well, one of the sessions there talked about Save the Cat, and I thought, what does saving cats have to do with writing? Well, turns out it's all about plotting. I've always been a pantser, not a plotter. In other words, I write by the seat of my pants. Good thing it's not the pants of shame. I've never plotted my books, and I never knew how they would end until I got to the end. But I think that's why my last uh, NaNoWriMo attempts, I never finished. But the way plotting is explained in Save the Cat makes so much more sense. So I gotta get done, but I'm hoping to try it this year. We'll see how I do. Note to self, maybe it's time to pick some character names. As far as reading goes, I finished the audible version of Emma and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Elton is so delightfully annoying, nightly, and um, Mr. Woodhouse is so selfishly dependent. Um, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed listening to Emma Thompson narrate. I love the accent, which is probably why I follow the YouTube shows that I do. Um, the Australian and the British accent. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to knit too. I definitely recommend it. The other audible listen that I did was a short story by Jonathan Mayberry. Um, I love his Joe Ledger series uh, because it's all about fighting evil and righteous rage against injustice. And I just, I love that. Um, but this um, was a short story called Lullaby and it was just creepy and captivating. Personally, I don't believe in ghosts and, you know, that sort of thing. But um, I think that creations like these are just fun and they get my spine tingling in just the right way, just, for, just in time for Halloween. However, if you're a new parent, um, I don't really recommend this read, especially if you believe in ghosts, because it does center around the haunting of a baby. Um, but uh, if your babies are already grown and or old enough and they are tearing up the house and driving you bonkers, then yeah, this is a fun read. <laughs> I'm still reading Tolkien and I'm probably going to be still reading that for quite a while. Um, I just finished up the chapter of Herbs and Stewed Rabbit, um, and in the movie version, uh, when Smeagol brings Frodo and Sam rabbits to eat, he says, eat them, eat them, and my mind wanders to Sam I Am with his green eggs and ham. The perils of motherhood. <laughs> and finally, I'm going to be starting this one. It's um, The Lost Order by Steve Barry, and this is a, a book from uh, my Mystery Lovers book club that I'm on part of at the library. Um, I've put the audio version on hold um, on at the library, and I'm kind of hoping that it'll come in soon because I'd rather listen and knit because this is kind of a thick book. I think it's going to take a little longer than normal. Um, 
but it looks interesting. It's about history, kind of um, looks to be, you know, similar along the lines of um, National Treasure, you know, um, but it looks like fun. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that one. And that's so, that's all I got for this episode. Um, I'm going to try to post again um, in, in two weeks. Um, my mom is coming to visit, so I don't know how accurate that's going to be. But I'm trying to do an every two week deadline. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what you think um, in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.